It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1309, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. Now, if you wanna know more about me and my credentials and my background, definitely check out a Q&A episode from earlier this month. Or you can always go to our website and find more about me there, oldpodcast.com. But in the meantime, I'm gonna keep this intro nice and short, so let's get right to today's question as we optimize your life. Hi, Dr. Neil. Thanks for the podcast and for all that you do. I've been an avid listener for years now, and uh, it's really helped me out. Um, I'm 35 and I weigh 185 pounds and I'm on month eight of a lean bulk and I'm adding about 1.4 pounds of, uh, it looks like muscle, um, almost entirely muscle per, per month. And I'm targeting, uh, 200 grams of protein and 225 grams of carbs a day. The issue I'm, I'm calling about is timing. So during the day I'm able to eat uh, mostly lean protein. That's all good. But by the time the evening um, rolls around, I'm stressed from a long day of work. Usually have a you know a drink, and at that point, I uh, end up eating too many carbs. I still hit my goal of uh, 200 grams of protein and less than 225 grams of carbs. But on a given evening, I'm easily eating a thousand calories. How badly am I harming my progress? I guess by eating that many carbs that late at night. Thanks again for your help. Thank you so much for your question, caller, and thank you for being a longtime listener. I'm so glad you enjoy the podcast, but most of all, that you find it helpful. First, I must mention that your dedication to your health is so very inspiring. The fact that you've been so consistent with not only your exercise, but reaching your nutrient targets as well is amazing. This is not easy. I'm thrilled that you've been making such consistent gains in what seems to be your muscle mass. Now, if you were to twist my arm, which based on your workout routine, you could probably do quite easily. And if you were to ask me point blank, whether consuming highly processed carbohydrates late at night is causing you any damage, I would say probably not. So there you go, show's over. All right, you twisted my arm, I'll explain. You mentioned that even when you consume these highly processed carbohydrate-rich foods late in the evening, you still seem to be meeting your nutrient targets. This is one reason why I'm not super concerned about it. Now, if you happen to ask me whether consuming these foods is potentially holding you back from maximizing your potential, well, that's another story. In that case, I would confidently say, maybe. Here's the deal. Everyone's body metabolizes nutrients a little bit differently. For example, those who may not be as consistent with their physical activity are more likely to process and store the foods they eat as fat. Someone that is consistently active is more likely to shuttle the nutrients they consume as stored sugar, also known as glycogen, or use those nutrients to help rebuild muscle instead of storing it as fat. Not only that, but someone that is consistently active is more likely to burn fat as fuel all the time. When they're working out, watching the entire four-hour Snyder Cut of Justice League in one sitting, or even while sleeping. But this only explains part of what's going on. I haven't yet mentioned the importance of the other meals and snacks that take place during the day. Oh, and sleep patterns seem to play a role in all of this too. The American Heart Association recently published a statement on meal timing. They didn't address consuming highly processed carbohydrate-rich foods specifically, but their main takeaways are still worth mentioning. They said that when you look at what's been published in the past, it seems like late night eating can increase a person's risk for developing obesity, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and even cardiovascular disease. But they said that this is misleading. Well-designed studies are being conducted and aren't finding that late night eating is necessarily a problem. It really depends on the person and their lifestyle. For example, Many of us would define 11.30 p.m. as being late night. But what if you didn't wake up until noon that day? Well, if you didn't wake up until noon, now 11.30 p.m. is dinner time. This is where our sleep patterns can play a role. 
when we think about meal quality and meal timing, if our meals throughout the day are well-planned and balanced, then consuming food late at night may not be an issue. If we skip breakfast and lunch and have one meal before bed, well, that may pose some health problems, not necessarily because of meal timing, but because that meal will likely not be well-balanced and because one meal will probably not provide all the nutrients the body needs for the day. Now, I mentioned something about eating to maximize your potential. I know it can be difficult to give up some of those carb-rich foods, especially at the end of the day. These foods release dopamine in the brain, making us feel more calm and relaxed. They seem to help us de-stress, so I get it. But some early studies are finding that drinking a high-protein beverage that contains about 150 calories before bed may be helpful for rebuilding muscle and increasing resting metabolic rate in those that participate in regular physical activity. So, if you're able to swap some of those carbohydrate-rich foods for maybe a glass of milk before bed instead, it may help maximize muscle growth and increase your metabolism the next morning. And a big thank you to Cozy Earth for their support. Cozy Earth makes a variety of bamboo products, including sheets, duvet covers, comforters, pillowcases, loungewear, and more. Their quality will get you talking to your friends about it. Cozy Earth's bedding and loungewear sleeps 50% less humid than cotton. They're certified free of harmful chemicals, and their products come from an ethical supply chain. And they have a 10-year warranty on all bedding. You don't have to worry about pilling, and washing and drying is easy, and it's safe in machines. I got their sheets, and they're the softest I've ever had. I don't think I can ever go back to cotton after using Cozy Earth. I actually look forward to getting into bed just for the feeling. You'll see what I mean when you try it for yourself. Go to CozyEarth.com to check out the great selection of bamboo bedding and loungewear. Optimal Health Daily listeners will receive an incredible discount of 40% off site-wide when you use promo code OHD podcast. That's cozyearth.com and use promo code OHD podcast at checkout. That's the best deal they have offered. So thank you to Cozy Earth for that. And thank you so much again for the question caller. Now, if you want your question answered right here on the show, send one in. You can email one to health at oldpodcast.com. And if you want to send one in via audio, just like today's listener, Come by oldpodcast.com slash ask to record right from your computer. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in. The number is 61 I love ohd All right, that's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. I hope you have a wonderful start to your weekend, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.